This is why I wrote a note earlier because we were talking about depression, and I've always wondered um, if the depression that people see in mass today. There's so much depression that people. Uh, I mean, there's a co- it's a common trait. Like it's it's a common condition. Oh, he suffers from depression. Oh, she suffers from depression. Like oh, he's got herpes. You know, you know what I mean? It's like it's a it's a common thing. I've always wondered, or I've been wondering more and more recently. Um, it really hit me when. Have you ever seen uh, Heimo's Arctic Adventure? Mm-hmm. It was one of the first uh, Vice pieces that I ever saw. I think the first Vice piece I ever saw. In fact, no. The first one was David Cho looking for a dinosaur in the Amazon. <laughs> or was he in the Congo? I think he was in the Congo. <clears throat> David Cho's so fucking crazy. I love that guy. But <laughs> he fucking went to Africa. The guy's worth like $100 million. He went to Africa looking for a fucking dinosaur that definitely doesn't exist. But, <laughs> but uh, Vice has done some awesome stuff. But one of the things they did that was really interesting was this, this guy. Uh, his name's Heinmo. Uh, I, th- I think that's how you say it. H e i m. Here it is. Hymo's uh, Hymo. I had an N in there. I think Hymo's Arctic Refuge. And this guy lives in this incredibly remote area of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in uh, the Alaskan Interior. And he he lives in this really small log cabin. And he hunts and gathers, and that's all he does. And he's very smart, like he's not a dummy at all. And he's been up there. He lives with his wife, and his he raised children up there. And it's really, really, there's some dark moments in there because they lived like this from the time like when they had children up there, and they lost their two-year-old baby in a fucking canoe, like they tipped over in a in a canoe and lost their kid and it's like it's really intense when they revisit the site and leave flowers and it was like 30 years ago and they've had several children since then but this moment is still like this intense moment of loss for them when they lost their baby but this fucking guy is very happy and very very smart and very connected and very articulate and he firmly believes that human beings when we evolved and developed and were hunter-gatherers that there's a set of rewards there's reward systems that are set up inside the human body inside the 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 very being that we embody that don't get met in today's society and it's one of the things that's causing depression one of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives many of us at least in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired and on top of that you're eating shit you're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda and your body is just like what in the fuck is this we're supposed to be out in the fields we're supposed to be walking up hills we're supposed to be looking for animals or gathering vegetables we're supposed to be doing all these things that our body's designed to do we're supposed to be in nature yeah. and nature is like a medicine like it literally is a medicine to you like people yeah. people that go you don't have to go hunting you don't have to go fishing just go fucking hike man just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out you know there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely like soul filling Mm -hmm. there's like something about like when I was in Colorado and there was this um, this area of Boulder where you drive up one of these roads and there's this area where you could park and it was this incredible view man these people just park and just go out there and just look but you get there and you park and you go Fuck. Because you would see, you, you're literally seeing the continental divide. These snow capped mountains in July. Yeah. In July, it's covered with snow. Because those mountains don't give a fuck. Perspective. Oh. You know, just this whole new perspective on it. And I think nature, I think the ease of suffering is always in presentness. You know, when you're in presentness, truly locked in, in presentness, there is no suffering. There can be pain, but no suffering. Suffering is, an, is something created by our own minds. And mm. I think nature is one of the great ways to do this because humans, we, we learn, we take cues from our environment. And nature, as I was saying earlier, is always in the present. You know, there's this natural presentness of all the animals, everything around you. Whereas if you get around a bunch of people watching housewives and stressed about this and popping pills, you're going to take on that energy too. And you're going to lose your presentness because of your surroundings. So it's like this ultimate regrounding tool where we get back to, ah, present moment again. Yeah. You know, and that's such a fucking key element to human happiness. And I think the other key element is having something where 
we're fighting for, you know, having a mission. I think we're all forces and that force needs to have an effect, needs to have a reason that it's moving in a certain direction. And I think with all of our needs and all of our needs met, you know, where we don't have to hunt for food, we don't have to acquire everything, everything's relatively easy and it's all about advancement and all this. We've lost a lot of the basic mission, which was the mission to survive and procreate, you know, so, and we haven't replaced it with any other universal mission, which is, I think, one of the, the big allures of these things like wars and these things like creating an enemy. Well, at least then you have a mission. And when you have a mission, human beings are happy. You know, like uh, Bertrand Russell talked about, he did a book, Conquest of Happiness, and he had his own fucked up attributes. Every time I bring him up, people talk about his fucked upness. He thought he was into phrenology and he might have been a racist, whatever, but he was a good philosopher. <laughs> Smoked constantly. Yeah. But, but anyways, he talked about the happiest person he knew. The happiest person he could find was a groundskeeper on a manor who every day woke up and was at war with the rabbits of the ground. <laughs> he just declared that the rabbits were the fucking enemy and he would go out with his gun and he would hunt as many as possible and he'd go morning till till night and he would kill as many rabbits as he could because it was his, the rabbits were the ones eating the hedges and the flowers and whatever. So he basically made the rabbits his enemy and struck out every single day to kill as many rabbits as possible. And that dude, according to Bertrand Russell, was happy as fuck. He had a task. He had a task. He had a purpose. You know, he had a mission. My mission is to destroy the rabbits. I used to have a dog like that. <laughs> yeah? I had the, the happiest dog ever. His name was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> And uh, he was a pit bull that all he lived for was killing lizards. And my <laughs> house, my old house, not the house I'm in now, but my old house had this uh, one, um, it's like uh, on a hill, and there's this one wall where these lizards would run up the wall. And so Frank, I would literally let him out in the morning, and he would fucking bolt out that door. It's like, time to go to war! Like, <laughs> and he would run and go look for these lizards. And yeah. he would stand there, like, Eddie Bravo would just watch it and marvel. He'd be like, fuck, man, this dog does this every day. This dog does this every day. I go, this is what he loves to do. And he would go there, and he would have his paws on the wall. And he would, ah, 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 ah. And he would go crazy, and he would jump up and try to grab a lizard, and occasionally he would get one. And he'd be like, fuck yeah! And he would get one, and he would go looking for another one. He would go, and it was a pretty big yard, so he would go wandering around the yard looking for anything else that fucked up, anything else that was slipping. There was yeah. constantly, unfortunately, twice, I had to take him to the hospital because he got bit by rattlesnakes because <laughs> rattlesnakes were slipping too apparently <laughs> He killed the rattlesnakes, but the rattlesnakes fucked him up. Yeah. He had like a water balloon growing out of the oh, side Jesus. of his head Both yeah. of my dogs I it was in it by the way. That's a real problem if you um, don't have the money to pay for the serum It's super expensive. It was several thousand dollars to treat them for uh, this rattlesnake venom, anti-venom shit. It's like, I was like, man, what if I was poor? What if, uh, yeah, that, that's a whole fucked up system. Like you, they inject horses with the venom mm -hmm. and then they like get the antibodies from the yep, horses. It's exactly. like this archaic system. I think my friend uh, Donald Schultz is working on, he's a big snake handler guy. He's working on ways to innovate around that because it's kind yeah. of like a real backwards system that they have, how you get anti-venom. Well, yeah. a horse will survive, so let's just fucking sort of put the venom in there and then we'll get yeah. the antibodies from the horse and then, you know, it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing how they do it. Yeah, well, that's a real problem with people that are vegans. If you're a vegan and you don't use any animal products and you get bit by a rattlesnake, you got two choices. <laughs> Compromise your morals? Well, that's a wrap, yeah. you know? Um, but this dog was so goddamn happy. Mm -hmm. He had missions. Yeah. You know, he would go out of that yard and he wasn't bored. He was like, please take me for a walk. Come on, man. He was like, see you, dude. I'd open that door. He was gone. Yeah. He just had his little mission. And I think you can see that in the people who are the most unhappy. They seem aimless. Yeah. They're like, what am I here for? Why am yeah. I doing this? Nothing makes sense, you know? Yeah. And I've even felt it in my own life when... You know, I know what my mission here is. For my mission is to expand human consciousness, to help people be happy. Like that's really what I find my greatest purpose in. But every once in a while, I'll get this kind of like fuck people attitude. Maybe someone said some fucked up shit, and I'm like, man, people fucking suck. Fuck people. And then at that point, that's when I'm actually depressed. Yeah. You know, because I've lost my mission. Instead of having a mission like, yes, my mission is human consciousness. All of a sudden, it's like, fuck people, fuck that mission. They'll figure it out. And then I'm depressed because I've lost my purpose. It's very hard to rise above, like literally, when something like that happens, and realize like, oh, you just you're you're encountering one diseased individual. You got to yeah, yeah. look at the mass of humanity. Yeah. Like when you encounter one diseased individual. It's it's so like this guy who shot up that nightclub in Orlando. You're, you're looking at one diseased individual, and if you say, "Man, people fucking suck," look at what they did. 
Well, look at how many people that are responding with rainbows on their Twitter pages and love and, and, and all the best wishes to those folks that got killed and all that. I mean, I was looking at this guy's page who's a, uh, an animal lover who was organizing people to go to the homes of the victims and see if they have pets that are trapped. You know, there's, there's beautiful people out there. Yeah. There's no a lot. There's more beautiful people. This, this is, without a doubt, not just the safest, the easiest. This is the happiest time in terms of, like, being able to, like, reach out and, and, and send love to people and have people send love to you. But just occasionally you run into cunts. Yeah, no doubt. Know? And the cunts itself, man. But the, the beauty is out there, too. It's yeah. just not as dramatic, and it doesn't impose upon us as mm -hmm. forcefully. But if we just look, it's around all the time. We run into good people all the time. But you just make eye contact with that good person or that kid who's just looking at you and just creeping yeah. with that little smile. And you're like, oh, yeah, the good of humanity. The fact that you know we really are love you know, being expressed, you know, outwardly all the time. And it's just these other delusions that get in the way of that. Well, we're oddly attracted to negativity, too. It's almost like we look at negativity online or that you run into as like a possibility of war. Like you have to look out, there's fucking drums beating. God damn it, there's an army on the background. They're coming, they're coming. But, you know, it's like this, this real impulse to sort of batten down the hatches. When really it's just some fucking 36 year old loser sitting in his parents' basement, you know, farting and smelling his own farts and angry online. I mean, that's really what a lot of you're dealing with. You're, re you're dealing with like really sick people, like people that have just, for whatever reason, They've not found their path. They've not found any happiness. They've not found any fulfillment. They don't found. They haven't found any growth. They're just stifled or rotten in some sort of a weird way. It just hasn't really worked for them. Yeah. And so they're they're lashing out. They're lashing out at the world. And you run into one of those. And you know, ah, oh, people suck. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the initial response. And then the more conscious response is to look at them and, be, and have compassion for that person. Yeah, you know, that's and, hard and that's, to do, right? That is hard to do, and, and our system isn't based upon that. Even if you look at the U.S. penal system, it's very much about punishment. Whereas if you watch that, that uh, documentary that Michael Moore did, Who to Invade Nest, where they go to Norway, they have a whole different idea of what the penal system is for. It's about restoring human dignity and cultivating you know, a, a change, really making change in the person. Mm. It's not about punishment, it's about it's about actually changing that individual so he doesn't do it again. And then you look at the recidivism rates between our prisons and Norway's prisons, and they're just dramatically different. That impulse to punish immediately, you know, is not the healthiest impulse. That's right. just going to create more issues down the road. You're not rehabilitating anybody. You're just taking even more broken people and putting them out in the world and hoping they're not going to do the broken thing. Well, it's not going to fucking work. You know, the, the right impulse is always that compassion and looking to see as if that was you how all of these fucked up elements of the world and choices i'm not overriding the fact that they had choices in all this they're not free of guilt but look at look at that like this is the person that just made some bad choices and had some tough shit to deal with and couldn't overcome it the resistance in the video game was higher than his skill set and he wasn't able to to choose to work and choose to the, the positive elements that would allow him to overcome